Here lies Tom Baker, who made titties tingle. Hello everyone, my name is Decalate, the trained and professional, and welcome back to Echo. We made the decision to try to disarm Duke, and now it's Sunday. Which makes me think that this was the right path, because all the bad paths end on Saturday, don't they? No, they don't. No, they do. I don't know. We'll see. I stare into the rearview mirror, watching for any signs of taillights in our wake. Leo's driving, of course. Carl's feeling woozy after everything that happened. I wish I was sitting in the back with him, but unfortunately my legs are too long. That and Leo's van is clearly not designed for folks with thick tails, but I gotta sit with my cheeks straddling the edge of the... straddling the edge to make room. He's sitting in between Jenna and TJ, with Dax and Chase in the back. There's been some chatter about what happened, and what's bullshit and what not bullshit. TJ's the only one who's been quiet. The one thing's for certain, with everything that's happened, everyone seems pretty focused on getting out of town. Ugh. Leo doesn't floor it like I expected him to, but we move down the bench of the mountain and through the town speedily enough. I see Jenna look out over window intently, and I... I can only imagine if it's to see if we can spot if she spot can spot Jeremy, maybe even her father. Dude, I don't feel good. Chase got bit by a black widow, and he's been complaining less than you, Carl. Speaking of, how are you holding up, Otter? Chase gives a half-hearted thumbs up. The must must lids forehead resting against the side of the window. Carl, just puke on the floor if you have to. I don't think Leo's going to stop. This seems oddly familiar. Carl leans over and puts his head between his knees, groaning. This is very familiar. That gets TJ's attention. He starts rubbing the ram's back slowly. You think smoothies probably aren't too bad on the way out. TJ frowns. He turned the dial on to get the radio, but like the cell phone signal, I'm not getting anything. For now, I just turn up the AC and aim it up towards my face. My head's still throbbing up a storm. This feels like a dream, doesn't it? We can speak softly, too quiet for anyone behind us to hear. I wouldn't know. You put Chase in danger. Oh, God. I cross my forearms over the dashboard and lean my face into them. I also saved his ass. I keep my voice low. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Carl perking up to listen in. Doesn't excuse it. Seven years ago, I swore to Chase I'd fuck up anybody who pulled anything like what you just did. I'm not in the mood for this shit, Leo. You want to hit me? Sure. Whatever keeps your alpha dog juices flowing. Leo goes quiet for a second, seemingly not ha having expected me to relent. You're going to stay away from him then? Gladly. Don't know if I believe you. Jesus, fuck. I can see him begin to fidget with the mirror, squinting at it for a second. He pushes the cab light, and the interior of the van is quickly illuminated with a sort of too bright amber glow. What is it, Leo? I push myself up. Leo is still staring at the mirror. Chase? He shaved again. Dax screams, What the fuck? I and the others quickly turn around to see what the commotion is about. For a split second, I think I see something fading into the seat cushions between Dax and Chase. It's this blackish brown silhouette of a person. It reminds me of how you how when you stare at a light for a while and close your eyes you can still see it for a moment. I blink and it's gone. You saw that right? What in the Sam Hill? Tell me you saw that. I, I don't know what I saw. Carl's rubbing his eyes. I didn't see anything. What happened? God damn, I can feel that thing! Dax looks to Chase, who's clearly kind of out of it at this point. You remember when I told you about how in the dream thing I had, I could feel your fur? It was just like that. Really? Huh. Chase sounds nonplussed. The skin around his eyes is a bit pale. It's clear whether he saw what it's unclear whether he saw what he did, the otter patting the fabric of the spot where the silhouette was. It looked like you. Relax, guys, it's just Chase. He wouldn't hurt a fly. 
Chase, the real Chase, groans. Yeah, sure. His voice is still weird and high-pitched. It kind of seems like I'm the only person who's noticing it. No, Leo, I'm talking about the fact that there were two freaking Chases next to me! Chase, do you know what's happening? The other grimaces as he rolls his neck to look at me. It's the hysteria, man. It's like what the mayor and Duke said. People see stuff and go nuts. I'm just glad I'm not the only one seeing this stupid shit anymore. So you're telling me that this is some sort of collective psychosis? That you all are witnessing hallucinations of the same thing? Dude, I've been on acid before. You can at least tell that something's w something weird's happening in your body when stuff starts popping up. All things considered, I'm like, okay, and still could see whatever the hell that was. Carl shifts nervously in his seat, the ram looking uncomfortable with having his back turned to the now empty space. It's like, shadow chase. I saw it in the rearview mirror first. Leo's still looking in said mirror. We're fucking fortunate we're on a straight shot road now. He visits a lot. Jer Jenna furrows her brow at the wolf. Leo. She pauses, noting the vacant look on Leo's face. Do you want me to drive for a bit? That's funny. I'm serious. So am I. Well, let's try not to think about this for right now. That's a bit of a tall order. Jenna shrugs uncomfortably. It's your choice. Can we just change the subject? A few minutes later, we're already passing the lake. Huh, so it's, is it Sunday already? Sunday morning? That's what the clock says. What a fucking day. I don't say anything in response. <sighs> we never got to ask Flynn's aunt about the, the thing. We'd always go back and ask. What? No, I, I just... He's kidding, TJ. Oh. The Lynx stares at the space between his knees. Do you actually think she'd know anything about it, Flynn? I don't know. She and Mark knew enough about what happened with the body, though. Carl shivers and puts his head back down while TJ continues to rub his back. A few minutes of silence go by before Carl speaks up again. It feels kind of nice. Reminds me of my mom. Yeah, actually my mom did it too. Thought it might help. Hey, I love you, just so you know. All you guys. I'm glad we're getting out of here. Fuck it, I'm going back to Pueblo. I raise a brow ridge at the ram. And I'm taking you with me. He points a thick finger toward me, leaning forward enough that he pokes me in the shoulder. Or may I restrain a smile, instead letting out an idle grunt. Me? College? What a thought. The idea of being around guys my age. And Carl. Not even sure what the hell I'd major in. Definitely not fucking poli-sci. I squeeze my wrist, trying to refocus. I love you too, Carl. And everyone else. You too, Captain Daxton. Captain. Oh, I was promoted. Cool. <laughs> Daxton seems distracted, watching Chase stare at his own fingertips. Yeah. Chase affirms his love for everyone with a groggy monotone. Jenna glances back at them before turning her attention out her own window. Leo doesn't say anything from the front, his focus solely on the road ahead of him. Are we at the clinic yet? Still about 20 minutes out. Out. I watch the desert whip by us, for the first time feeling somewhat safe as the town disappears behind us. Mm, but of course, it doesn't last long. What's that? On the side of the road there. Hmm. <clears throat> Leo turns his head in the direction of something on the curb ahead. Up ahead, we all do. Oh boy! Oh boy! What is that? Oh my gosh! TJ covers his mouth. Carl sits up straight, trying to see. Leo slows down as we pass. There's Chase's car, all the windows shattered. And there's Duke, lying a dozen feet away from the open door of the driver's side. And 
there, crashing over him, is something I can't explain. Yeah, we've definitely slipped into a different route, but we... We haven't actually slipped into a different route. There's just... Shit is shifting now. There's... Because Duke was back there, but now he's up ahead of us, and... This is the whole thing where we got launched into the lake. Or at least the setup to it. They're crouching over him is something I can't explain. Hairless body and limbs long. Way too long. The head comes up and all I see is three holes in blood. TJ screams next to me and Leo shouts something of a voice stepping on the gas, slamming me back into my seat. I try to look back, but whatever it was is gone. At least, it's gone from where it was. Because I see something move next to my window and I turn to face it. And it stares back at me. But only for a moment. That thing, whatever the fuck it is, disappears almost the instant I register that it's there. I'm only staring out into the blackness of the desert. Still, three holes, eyes, and a mouth blink back at me in a sort of afterimage before that too vanishes. It's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. TJ reaches up and grabs my arm, claws out. I'm too shocked to even pull away as TJ leans forward next to me, staring out my window. At least I know I'm not the only one that saw it. TJ squeaks again and when no one answers him. It's real! I don't know, some kind of animal maybe? I've never seen anything like that before. Dude could have had a disease, lost all of his fur or something, maybe Duke hit it. But it was walking! How was Duke here? He was back at City Hall! Maybe it dragged him? Faster than our car? How'd he get Chase's car? I still have my keys on me. That's impossible. Could hardwired it? I don't know, man. TJ leans back, looping his armor on Carl's, and I can see him shaking. I look over my shoulder through the back window. Jesus fuck, just like Dax described. There! We've all seen it! It's how I remember, but I don't remember it ever moving that fast. Or with, you know, blood. Jenna wrings her paws together, speaking quietly. Her tone is thoughtful and worried, as if she's trying to rationalize this all to herself. Fuck, that's why I got Salem, isn't it? Jesus, don't fucking take your foot off the gas, Leo. Leo doesn't respond, staring straight ahead. He's squeezing on the wheel so hard it looks like it's bending. I pull back the hammer on the repeater, holding the rifle across my chest with barrel pointed towards the window. I remember Duke's pistol that I shoved, I stowed in the car door or holder earlier. I grab it and toss it into the back seat. Yeah, toss a loaded gun, that's great. Jenna grabs it without hesitation, aiming it out the opposite side. This is freaking nuts! At this point, Chase's car is a good distance away, only visible because the headlights are on, a streak of light fading out across the desert. Duke's dead, isn't he? <laughs> Some dry retching noises followed by heavy splattering sounds cut me off. Wait a minute. Cut me off? Chase was the one talking. What? Carl is hunched over in the, in the seat, head between his legs. It isn't hard to figure out what just happened, especially with the smell when the smell hits me. Oh my gosh, Carl! TJ looks torn between balance, blanching away and comforting the ram. Carl looks back up, looking like he's about to say something before diving forward again. Much louder wretch, followed by a much quieter plopping sound follows. I grimace, feeling my own stomach roll. God! Daxton's looking up at them, a paw to his nose. You okay, man? Carl keeps his head down a while longer, his fingers twisted into the fabric of his shorts. TJ tentatively rubs his back. I would have out of the window if I didn't want to open any of the windows now, though. It's okay. Leo, are there any napkins up there? Leo, who's been silent up until now, remains silent. He's staring at the windshield hard, paws on the wheel in a death grip. Chase, meanwhile, okay, so maybe that was just a typo earlier. Chase, meanwhile, clutching at his chest, his eyes red and bleary. He leans forward, and the sound of something wet hitting the fabric floor mat is audible through the ca throughout the cabin. Chase's puke sounds much less wet than Carl's, and Wretch is more grotesque. The Wretch is, is more grotesque. 
correctly, feel the bile in my own esophagus. Daxton stops what he's doing and holds Chase. Fuck! The otter manages to exclaim before the, between the bouts of puking. Drink some water! During all this, I'm still glancing out the windows. Not head on, though, because I'm honestly fucking terrified of, the, of that. I'm going through, going to look straight into the eye, those eyes again. We drive in sons for the next five minutes with no creature in sight, thankfully. But I don't know what to think right now. There's no way what I saw was some animal like Carl implied. The way it moved, the way it crouched, and most of all, its face. I've never seen anything like it. At least anything that's not a Halloween costume. Maybe... Maybe one of the locals dressed up in a costume or something. Is this some sort of shitty prank show? Like the one on the science fiction channel? Then how the fuck did it keep up with the car? We were going that fa- were we going that fast? Leo did slow down a little. I keep these- these thoughts to myself. Everyone looks freaked out enough without any more speculation. I feel trapped like I'm stuck in a metal box. I can barely move and with a gun I can't aim. That's actually what's happening. This thing can outrun and rip out at- rip at at cars. Nothing is safe. I just have to focus. We're on our way out, and soon I'll be safe in a clinic, police station, or an applauding audience surrounded by a shit ton of cameras. If it's the latter, I'm decking the first fucker that comes out with a microphone. I try not to think about Duke by the car, Salem on the blanket, my aunt there, trying to keep everyone safe. With that thing. I shake my head, trying to w stay watch for any sign of movement. Are you okay, Chase? DJ's arm is still around Carl as the lynx craning his neck to peer back at the hun hunched over otter. I've never been so freaking scared in my life. But yeah, okay. Chase grasps at his throat and neck, wincing heavily. It's getting harder to breathe. Hold on, Chase. Motherfucker, dude. Oh my god, what a fucking place to stop. I don't know what would have happened if we chose the other shit, but since it's only about 18 minutes in, I say we, uh... I say we go, uh... You find out, eh? You guys up for that shit? You wanna see what happens if we, uh, trust Daxton? Sid's dad flashes in my mind. The hole in his head, the look in his eyes, I keep my rifle clutched across my chest, pointed downward. Dax. Uh, yeah? He's staring wide-eyed at the gun in Duke's grasp, his blue hands in the air. You gonna elaborate? Oh, uh, yeah, um... Hi. Dax is a sort of awkward wave, before slowly lowering his hands. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I just... I don't think this is right. Perhaps we can perceive the guilt of others as t at times in these sort of waking visions. You mentioned, you see, her. I don't presume to be knowing who her is, but it also sounds like you've got some baggage, too. You're testing me some fears. Move, kid! Daxton flinches, and I gingerly take a few steps closer to the weasel. We, uh... You put all that out in the open with the details. I'm just saying, uh, to assume that this is all caused by Chase here is perhaps overstating Chase's importance. And killing somebody, or, or even just letting him die, uh, might just be fueling the madness at hand. In my dreams, the only one with the ones with Chase in them, nothing's pointing towards some deep, otherworldly call that he needs to perish. Even you, Miss Mary, you can see the logic in that. Auntie stands with her hands on her hips, lips pursed. And what counters madness? Logic. Daxon smiles uneasily. Shoot them both! Someone in the crowd yells. I step forward and smack Dew's wrist, the gun falling to the ground and the gravel beneath. Next thing I know, Leo is... Oh. Well, what the fuck is the difference? Oh, let's see the thing again. See the thing? Oh, there it was. Oh, scary. I guess that's it for uh, Flynn's route. And to my knowledge, that's... Yeah, I checked all the other shits beforehand, so... That's all the updates for Echo until the next one comes out. The one I'm playing right now is... Uh, 
0 0.40. And I think a new one is going to be coming out soon. <laughs> so I guess I'm just waiting on the Echo Project team to come out with fucking the Smoke Room game, update to Echo and Adastra. <laughs> I guess they're they're just uh, my most anticipatory dev team, if that makes any sense. I don't know. All I know is uh, shit. There's a lot of shit going on right now uh, in this game, and I don't know what the fuck is about to happen with any of it. But uh, I guess we'll see what happens in the next one, eh? Whenever that happens. <laughs> But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the Trained Up Professional. Thank you very much for watching, and let's go ahead and uh, do the end slate now. The outro. <laughs> like old times, like a family. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On the left, you see a list of patrons from Patreon. Thank you very much to them. If you want to join them, there's a link in the middle to the Patreon page, as well as a link to subscribe. Um, on the right, there's the most recent upload, as well as one YouTube pick just for you. And links to everything in the description as well. Thank you guys.